Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, always, 1776.com, a free site. Let's talk bets for politics. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say here, Again, we're not trying to save the country with this video, right? I have my political beliefs, you have your political beliefs. What we're actually trying to do is to make money betting on political outcomes. Now, there is a great piece this morning on ZeroHedge.com. That's one of my favorite sites, ZeroHedge.com, where a big-time... Biden donor expresses his commitment not to raise money for Kamala Harris. Right? He's upset. He feels his guy, President Joe Biden, was mistreated and was forced out, and he does not believe in Kamala Harris. In fact, he makes the argument that Joe Biden, who announced his support for his vice president, 30 minutes before announcing that he uh, would no longer seek the Democratic nomination for the presidency in 2024, uh, this donor believes that was a big, my words, F U, right? Uh, just spell it out. Imagine how it's spelled. <laughs> That's a big F U, according to this donor, from Biden to the people who forced him out. Now, this morning, I was online talking with college friends and friends I used to work with. We have a little email group. Uh, let me just point out that the email group is very flooded with Democrats. And they're energized. They're excited. They believe that the party, the Democratic Party, is coalescing, coming together around a Kamala Harris candidacy, right? The feeling is she's the insider, she's the Bidenista, she's the one who has Biden's blessing for purposes of continuity uh, with a recognition that the general election is just a few months away. Senator Harris, Vice President Harris, forgive me for that, Vice President Harris uh, represents continuity. Uh, people like Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, have come together around her. Her fundraising is through the roof. I have a friend who sent a very impassioned email saying the base is energized. Right? They believe that this is the equivalent of Kamala Harris just walking down to Shams Elysee uh, on her way to pick up the nomination by acclamation. Right? Let me offer a different take that should have gamblers flocking, where legal, to polymarket.com to place bets that Harris will not be the Democratic nominee and that others have a shot. Right, I believe, particularly after reading the Zero Hedge article, that there are many donors who believe that Joe was mistreated and that Kamala has no chance. Now understand, in 2020, Biden copied Trump on China, on tariffs in general, on mercantilism, right? Folks, that's not a new idea, right? People act like Steve Bannon and Trump suddenly showed up in office with some idea on imposing tariffs uh, you know, having other people pay for the goods and services we buy. Folks, that's a failed economic model, right? Understand, the person who ends up paying for the tariffs is you, the consumer. You need to consider these tariffs as a tax. Understand, too, I mean, Biden shows up, Trump uh, has some ridiculous COVID lockdown policy in place, and Biden doesn't challenge it. Right, Biden instead has a slogan, Build Back Better. 
that concedes that government is supposed to have a big role in building back, right? I personally would question even that, right? Maybe government needed to get out of the way so there'd be less to build back. But just understand, what Biden was really telling you by adopting a lot of Trump's positions is that, and let's quote an earlier generation because the past is prologue. What he was saying was that he was a kinder, gentler Donald Trump. Right? He didn't come in challenging Trump on trade policy and stuff like that. No, he came in copying Trump on trade policy. Now, the problem that Vice President Harris has is she really has, apart from a federal right to abortion. She really has no agenda that separates her from Trump. Right? Understand, tariffs, immigration controls, that's all Trump. Right? Federal abortion rights, that is an issue, but understand, Trump's leave it to the states isn't a direct Reagan-era opposition to abortion. Understand, too, that Dems also will win California with Vice President Harris as the nominee or without Vice President Harris as the nominee. Right? Democrats typically win California by millions of votes. Let me point out, too, the current governor of California is a Democrat. Right? California is heavily Democratic. I would argue you're not picking up a state by having Harris as your nominee. Now, let's say the convention picks Roy Cooper with Josh Shapiro as his running mate. Suddenly, the Democrats win North Carolina and Pennsylvania, two states that they're having polling problems with right now, right? As governors, rather than members of the Senate or members of the House of Representatives, right? Understand, both Cooper and Shapiro have pet issues that are separate and distinct from Biden. The election wouldn't seem to be Trump versus a kinder Trump. And then there's the assassination attempt on Trump's life. Folks, something's not right, right? The Secret Service has already admitted to lapses. The audio of the gunshots, and I encourage everyone to look up Chris Martinson's videos here online. Understand, there were people in the crowd who had cell phones. This is not the Ambassador Hotel in the 1960s. You have a lot of people there with cell phones. The establishment can't squash the recordings. The audio of the gunshots supports the idea of two guns being used. At least two guns. Might be three. Understand, too, the first three gunshots have far less distortion than the other gunshots, which suggests that the guns were fired from inside a building. Now, it might shock some people, but if you look at the bullet trajectory, the open window is actually in the line of fire. Right? The early reviews of the assassination don't even put the alleged shooter in the line of fire. Right? Now, let me just say, given the Banana Republic string of court proceedings that preceded the shooting, it seems to many that, we'll put this in quotes, they, 
And you know who I'm talking about. You can fill in the blanks. It could be the deep state. It could be some other nefarious group. Intelligence communities in the deep state. Rogue actors in the deep state. But it looks like there's a they out there who are out to get Trump. Look, I know, you can criticize me. I'm just telling you the mood in the room, right? It's Trump who's the anti-establishment candidate, which is striking, because he, of course, is a former president of the United States. Recently, Trump has pivoted on crypto, right? He's now supporting crypto. The crypto community is interesting. Right? Because they have a different view of money, which gives them a different view of life than a lot of the public. Trump right now, even at a time where a spot Ethereum ETF has been approved, right? Which is shocking since Ethereum is proof of stake. I won't go down the crypto rabbit hole this video, but let's just say even with a recent shift by the Biden administration on crypto, it's Trump who's viewed as the crypto candidate. So, to this gambler, I don't think Kamala is a sure thing. I think there are other people who will be attending the Democratic Convention who are going to be competitive if their name is mentioned to be the next nominee. Now, I'm guessing Biden donors will be out in force if a Cooper, governor of North Carolina, or if a Shapiro, governor of Pennsylvania, or let's go there, more likely, Hillary Clinton is the nominee with, of course, either the governor of North Carolina or the governor of Pennsylvania as her vice president. Let's talk substantively. Hillary, since her husband, Bill, balanced the budget, last president to do so, can make that an issue. Right, folks? That would be new. That would be breathtaking, right? Tell us how you are going to address the elephant in the room. We've had a presidential race here where that hasn't happened, right? Understand, too, Hillary can argue for free trade with China and the rest of the world, which really is what Bill supported. Hillary can claim that she tried to warn us about what Trump called locker room talk years ago. And she might be able to tie that into the recent jury verdict in the defamation case, as well as the overturning of Roe versus Wade. The slogans make themselves. Before the slogan was, I'm with her. Now the slogan could be, I'm with her again, right? The videos of the 2016 debates will be replayed with Hillary looking much sharper than Biden. With women watching the videos, understanding that at the time we took Roe versus Wade for granted. Finally, we'll hear because this is a concern. We'll hear that Hillary, when the two went head to head, won the popular vote, right? That history will give her gravitas. So, let me just point out, right now the world is going in a different direction. You go to Poly Market and you're gonna see that a lot of people, the majority of people, believe that Kamala Harris is the Democratic nominee, right? My friends are pointing to the fact that Bill and Hillary have thrown their support behind 
Vice President Harris. What I want people to understand is that politics is a nuanced game. Right? Hillary just had a book come out. Just understand how things go. You don't want to be the person who looks like you're stabbing someone in the back to jump over that person to be the nominee. You have to play the game. Right? The vice president has, you know, tapped Vice President Harris. Uh, let me make a big statement here. It's fascinating that President Biden didn't say, I'm leaving office. Right? If he's having cognitive problems, what's he doing still as leader of the United States until this election? In fact, until January. Right? It's interesting that he did not give Vice President Harris the gravitas that would come from her being President of the United States, from us recognizing the moment as a woman, the first, being President of the United States. By the way, historians know <laughs> that Woodrow Wilson's wife was really running the country for a stretch, right? Know your history. But officially, Vice President Harris would have become the first female president of the United States. The fact that Biden did not step down speaks volumes. He's still the president, folks. Understand, Kamala Harris is just another person competing right now for the party nomination to run against Trump. Right? So, let me just say, a Hillary Clinton has an incentive to say, hey, the system supporting Kamala Harris, right? The vice president, Biden, who Hillary supported, has tapped, the president, Biden, has tapped vice president Harris. I'll support her. Hollywood money is flooding to Harris right now, right? But just understand, the mood's going to change in the days leading up to the convention. There are other groups, right? Donors among them who need convincing, right? I'm just telling you, there are going to be concerns about whether Harris... is the best candidate, rightly or wrongly, right? The public can sort that out. I'm just interested in the odds. With Hillary, there's at least a track record of her in a general election, getting more votes than Donald Trump, right? Many people were talking about Michelle Obama running. Understand, you get a two-for-one with Bill and Hillary here, right? Hillary also, you know, in a very contentious part of the country, has served as senator from the state of New York. Understand what's happening right now in the polls. Trump is competitive in Pennsylvania. Trump is competitive in New Jersey right now. Right? A Hillary candidacy would flood those media airwaves with the fact that Hillary, who of course is living in New York with Bill, has deep roots to the area, and Hillary, of course, would be able to travel through New Jersey, Pennsylvania, try to swing those states back to the blue column. Let me point out, too, that Hillary would have excellent opportunities to show humility. She ignored the Rust Belt in the 2016 election, and that cost her. We all know it. So now Hillary could show up in Michigan, where, by the way, Trump again, making major headway. Right? Hillary can show up in the Rust Belt. We understand. J.D. Vance is from Ohio. Understand, I believe Ohio is in the Republican column. I don't think there's much 
that can be done there. But Hillary would be able to show up and she'd be able to say, look, I made a mistake in 2016. Voters like politicians who admit to their mistakes, who are accountable, right? So my point is this. We don't have to know exactly who is the nominee. There'll be other names thrown in the mix, right? We don't have to know who the nominee is going to be. We can bet, though, that the nominee is someone other than Kamala Harris. Folks, you're getting tremendous odds, right? I'm not here being a partisan. You know, I'm in Northern California. A Harris presidency would be great for my area, right? Kamala Harris, very popular, as you can imagine, in Silicon Valley, right? Very popular in the East Bay of the Bay Area, right? Extremely popular. Presidents don't tend to ignore where they're from. Harris has deep roots in Northern California, right? I'm not here saying anyone should vote against Harris. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying, though, is Harris was not viewed as an Al Gore or a Dick Cheney in her performance as vice president, right? You got the feeling with those guys that if something happened to the presidency, the transition of power would be seamless. That Al Gore could walk in the room with a Putin and be able to sit down and have credibility. I'm not sure if we have that here with Vice President Harris. I believe there's an opening for the old guard of the Democratic Party to walk through with their own candidate. You're kidding yourself if you don't think there aren't deals being made right now, in my opinion. Well, just understand, because there are people out there like my friends who believe that Harris is inevitable, that Biden somehow has the power, Biden who didn't have the power to stay the nominee, somehow has the power to make the person he's tapped the nominee. Right? Because there's that misbelief right now, in my opinion, and because we don't understand that saying, hey, I support Harris doesn't preclude a person who's supporting Harris right now from then showing up at an open convention. If Harris then doesn't win by acclamation, then entering their name or better yet, having a political ally raise their name in conversations and then say, OK, look, if you're going to draft me, then I will listen. Right? If you don't think that a Hillary Clinton, a Wes Moore, a Josh Shapiro, or a Roy Cooper aren't viable, then I think you're kidding yourself. I believe the Democrats are going to have an open convention. I don't think Vice President Harris is going to be able to hold on to her lead. I think a lot of these props where it's Harris versus the field. In other words, I could be completely wrong, right? Let's say Jared Polis, the governor of Colorado, ends up with the nomination. I could sit there and say to myself, wow, did not see that coming. While I'm very pleased with the profits I've made on a Harris versus the field bet. Right, folks? Harris from this seat looks far from a certainty. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.